debriefing for healthcare professionals. This video is intended as an educational and training resource for healthcare professionals to perform debriefing of sinus tracts, more recently known as skin tunnels, for patients with hydrogenitis suppurativa, or HS. This is purely an information video, and watching does not confer competence to perform the procedure. After watching this video, you should be able to select appropriate patients for debriefing, ensure you have the correct equipment to perform the procedure, take informed consent with the patient, adequately prepare the patient for the procedure, know the steps involved in deroofing, provide appropriate post-operative care to the patient. HS is a chronic skin disease resulting in a mixture of inflammatory lesions, boils, skin tunnels and scarring. Deroofing treats skin tunnels by removing the roof of the tunnel and allowing a stable, flattened scar to form by secondary intention. Here is an example of a skin tunnel. In severe HS, there is often an interlinked network of tunnels that may extend further than the skin surface changes. We advise that the procedure is carried out in a minor operations setting, similar to the room shown here. You should be able to perform aseptic procedures within this setting, with access to hand washing facilities, mobile lighting, an equipment trolley and safe sharps disposal. An assistant is useful to look after the patient during the procedure, pass you equipment in an aseptic manner and to help you set up and clear away. Here is the equipment you will require. All patients should be appropriately consented prior to the procedure using a standard consent form. Benefits and risks of the procedure should be discussed. Risks of the procedure include pain, bleeding, infection, scarring, recurrence of disease and delayed healing. The patient should be examined, including palpation, prior to administration of local anaesthetic. The extent of the area due to be deroofed should be marked with a pen. The patient should be appropriately exposed and positioned comfortably on the operating table or couch. Local anaesthetic, usually with adrenaline, should be infiltrated wider the markings and deeply to anaesthetise the area. The equipment can then be set up using an aseptic technique whilst the anaesthetic takes effect. Cleanse the skin with appropriate skin preparation liquid and drape the surgical field to ensure maintenance of asepsis. Test and check with the patient that the skin is adequately anaesthetised. Insert the probe gently into the skin tunnel opening and push to the end of the tunnel. Retract the probe up and away from the skin with gentle and even pressure. Using the cut setting on the diathermy, pass the wire loop over the distal end of the probe and without stopping, smoothly cut and remove the roof of the tunnel along the length of the probe. We suggest this is done in one smooth movement as stopping midway through makes it difficult to produce an even wound edge along the length of the tunnel and can cause a lot of smoke. If you are using a needle or spatula tip, cut evenly along both sides of the probe and excise the strip of skin tunnel roof that is lying on the top of the probe. Removing the roof of the tunnel may reveal pus, scarring and granulation tissue in the base of the tunnel. Wipe away the pus and discharge. Use a curette to remove the granulation tissue and the superficial layer of scarring. This will produce an even, bleeding wound bed. The depth of this wound bed may be in the dermis or into the subcutaneous fat in places. Now cauterize any bleeding points using the diathermy. Small inflammatory nodules can be excised using the loop tip of the diathermy as shown here. Apply a petroleum-based barrier ointment. Then use a non-adherent dressing layer, such as tulle gras, followed by absorbent gauze, and a method of fixation, such as adhesive tape or wool and crepe bandage. There is not usually a need for post-operative antibiotics. Advise the patient that any small areas of bleeding through the dressing can usually be managed with direct pressure. Arrange a follow-up appointment for a dressing change for the patient. We suggest the first dressing change be at 48 hours. You can see here what a typical wound looks like at 48 hours. 
Further dressing changes can be arranged at the GP surgery, or the patient may be able to change dressings themselves at home. Wounds typically take two to four weeks to heal, but larger wounds may take six weeks to heal completely. Here are the wounds seen in the video four weeks after the procedure. You can see the largest wound is much smaller than it was, and there is evidence of ongoing secondary intention healing. The smaller wounds have healed almost completely. Here are the scars at three months, demonstrating complete healing. The procedure for me was quite good. The worst part of it was the nubbin injections. Um, there is a, a smell of the smoke while it's, the, it's burning. In terms of the noise of the suction, it didn't really bother me because I had a nurse behind me tapping me on the shoulder and constantly reassuring me. The rest was really good and everybody was really, really nice, supportive. Um, looking after the wound, I had daily dressings with the surgery, district nurses, and then my husband took over and it's healed really well. The scar feels to me now as smooth as any other piece of my skin. It doesn't, it doesn't look like a scar, it looks more like a tattoo. Really pleased with it. De-roofing has helped me because I've now got the use of my left arm again. I would recommend de-roofing to other HS patients, yes. Thank you for watching. Should you have any questions regarding this video or the procedure, please contact the Theseus team and we will endeavour to help you. We are grateful to Medtronic for providing the diathermy equipment used in the video.